today on Direction for Life. When other natural women say, no, it can't be done, supernatural say, oh yes, it can be done. When, when natural women say, uh, there's no way, supernatural say, oh no, there is a way. When, when, when natural women say, there's nothing more I can do, the supernatural woman still says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hello, grace and peace to you. I'm Dr. Herbert Bailey. Thanks for joining us again today for the Direction for Life broadcast. Well, ladies, the women's encounter here at Right Direction is getting ready to take place August 27th and 28th. You don't want to miss it. This is a time for women to come together, and Dr. Marsha and the women of Right Direction are praying for there to be an awesome, powerful move of God. It's called the encounter. The plan is you will encounter God here at Right Direction during those services. Plan to be here and the power of God will empower you to be all that you can be. Speaking of that, today's message is entitled The Supernatural Woman. It's from one of our prior women's conferences. You know, ladies, God does not just want you to operate in the natural. The Bible talks about women who were supernatural women, women of faith who even received their dead back to life again. The Bible says that Sarah herself received strength that she might receive and become the mother of many nations along with her husband Abraham. Listen, ladies, God wants to do great things in your life. Be blessed by today's word, the supernatural woman. Let's go to Exodus, the first chapter. In Exodus 1 and verse 15, I'm going to start reading there. Exodus 1 and verse 15, it says, and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shifra, and the name of the other was Pua. Aren't you glad your name is not Shifra and Pua? <laughs> Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, that's the birthing position, he said, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives to rebuke them. And he said unto them, why have ye not, why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Verse 19, which is the background for what I want to talk about today. Exodus 1, 19, it says, And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Now, and again, we got to bring this a little bit more modern translation to get the full impact. The New Living Translation of that verse says the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. The midwives replied, they are more vigorous. They have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. <laughs> Another translation out of Stumble Cross called God's Word says this, the midwives answered Pharaoh and said, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are so healthy that they have their babies before a midwife arrives. In other words, these are some supernatural women. These women are not like all other women. The other women, they struggling to do stuff. We get in there and they drop the baby. The other women need our help. We get there, they already got help. The other women are, 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 are falling apart and they, we get there, they already holding their own baby. And, and what it says there, it says that the Hebrew women, which for us means the covenant women of God, are not like the Egyptian women or the worldly women. How many of us know that the covenant women of God ought to be different than the worldly women? And he said there is clearly, she said, they were saying, there's clearly a difference between us and them. We are natural, they appear to be supernatural. We are slow, they are quick. We get sick, they stay healthy. These are supernatural women. 
And when I looked at the word or meditated on the word supernatural, I mean, it simply means super meaning above or beyond. It means above and beyond the natural. A supernatural woman is a woman who's above the average. A supernatural woman is a woman who's unique. Supernatural woman is a woman who is distinctive. A supernatural woman is a woman who is exceptional. Am I talking to the right crowd here this morning? And to use the words of the late Maya Angelou, a supernatural woman is a phenomenal woman. The enemy's plans for the Hebrew men and the Hebrew people, which was to diminish them, was to keep them from rising up and being a great people, keep them from reproducing more, was thoughted because of some above average, unique, distinguished, distinctive, exceptional, and phenomenal women. So supernatural women are women who live above the natural. Supernatural women think above the natural. Supernatural women act above the natural. Supernatural women respond above the natural. Also remind us that some of us, we think we're only responsible for our actions, but we're also responsible for our reactions. That's why the Bible says stuff like, be angry, because I know folk gonna get on your nerves. He said, but be angry, but sin not because he's not only responsible for our action but also our reaction but even more so supernatural women believe above and beyond the natural so when other natural women say no it can't be done supernatural say oh yes it can be done when, when natural women say uh, there's no way supernatural say oh no there is a way when 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 natural women say, there's nothing more I can do, the supernatural woman still says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And so as I started looking at this concept of supernatural women, several women and several distinct things came to my mind regarding attributes of a, of a supernatural woman, and I can't exhaust them all in the time that I had, but I do want to give you five. Five women who I believe the Bible show as, as these supernatural women who lived above the average. They, they thought above the natural. They acted above the, the natural. They responded. They believed above the natural. They were, ad, they were above average. They were unique. They were distinctive. They were exceptional and phenomenal. And, and the first characteristic, I think, that what, what I've outlined of a supernatural woman is that, number one, a supernatural woman is a woman of wisdom. Supernatural woman is a woman of wisdom. You know, Paul, Paul uh, 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 reminds Timothy, he said, teach the women that they don't be silly women. Teach the women that they're not women who just laid it in sins and lust. And he said, who, te teach the women to grow up so, as the Amplified said, they won't be spiritually dwarfed women who are, taken, who are taken advantage by men just looking to take advantage of a silly woman. Look at somebody say, they, they ain't at this conference. They ain't at this conference. But I got to cover this because some folk going to get the CD and the DVD, you're going to give it to them. They wasn't here. And y'all know those city women, I want y'all giving one of these CDs. But a supernatural woman is not a silly woman. She's a, she's a woman of wisdom. And, and I thought about Deborah. And Judges, the fourth chapter, and she's specifically mentioned in Judges, the fourth chapter, and the Judges, the fifth chapter. So before they were, uh, they were kings in Israel, God raised up judges. Judges were people who were recognized by the people and endorsed by the people, backed up by God to be people of wisdom who could judge over the matters of Israel and, and make determinations about what could be done. They served as the court. They served as the mediator. They served as the peacemaker. But, but Deborah wasn't just the average judge because the Bible tells us about Deborah is that she was a prophetess. Saying that she was a prophet meant that she heard God and she spoke for God on, on behalf of God to the people. 
See, if someone is a real prophetess, they don't speak their will. They don't try to speak words that try to manipulate. You know, the Lord telling me, um, you know, you need to come over here with me. No, 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 no. Not, it's not about their agenda. They speak God's agenda. They're not, they're not being manipulative because a prophetess is not a witch. And some of y'all need to understand, so many people call themselves prophetess, they're just witches. Witches in the pews trying to manipulate people, trying to get folks to do what they want them to do, trying to win people and bring them under your control rather than cause them to be yielded to the Spirit of God. So she was a prophetess, and then Judges 4 and 5, it says that she was a judge. And then it specifically says in Judges 4 and 5 that the people came to her for judgment. The people came to her for judgment. Of all the women, of all the men, even in the country, the people came to this woman for judgment. That means she had to be above average. That means she had to think above average. She had to discern above average, and and she had to give above average answers, and she had to hear God, and, and she had to be respected and respectable. If it said that she came, the people came to her for judgment, that meant that she, they came to her for justice, they came to her for decision-making, and they came to her for sound thinking. And so, women, if you're going to be supernatural women, you need to be people who have the wisdom of God that w- when you speak things, they're right. That you can make sound decisions and you're, you're sound in your thinking. And this required her to have good judgment or what the Bible refers to as, as merely wisdom. Proverbs 31, y'all, y'all, y'all all know it, but y'all know that woman who's outlined in Proverbs 31 is a supernatural woman. And one of the things it says about her, it says she openeth her mouth in Proverbs 31 and 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and, her, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Oh, so that tells me you can be a supernatural woman, and when your mouth opens up, wisdom comes out, and your tongue is filled with kindness. You don't have to cut folks up and slice folks with your tongue. That's not what supernatural women do. Proverbs 14 and 1 tells us more about this supernatural woman, a woman of wisdom. It says that, that every wise woman... Builds her house, but the foolish pluck it down with her own hands. When I read that, you know, sometimes you can have women say, the devil attacking my home. The devil trying to take my kids. The devil attacking my, is it possible that you tearing it down with your own hands? It says because a wise woman builds up her house, solidifies things, makes sure things stay in place. But he said, but the foolish woman, she'll, she'll pull it down and pluck it down, destroy it with her own hands or even her own mouth. So the supernatural woman, she knows what to say. Knows what to say. I had to meditate on this years ago because I know finding y'all hard, you'll find it's hard to believe, but in my younger days, I didn't always know what to say. You say things and folks get upset and you're like, wonder what happened? What, 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 what you, what's going on? what I say? And I had, to get, I had to meditate on the word and I came across this scripture from Isaiah 50 and 4. Okay, I know you ain't going to need this, but you may need to give it to the CD to somebody who don't know what to say. So Isaiah 50 and 4, it says, The Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Come on, say that with me. Say, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. And then it says, he waked with me morning by morning. So just in case, in case you, 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 you get up in the, the next day, you get ready to say something stupid. He said, he wakes you up every morning. And he wakens your ear to hear as the learned. 
And I started meditating on this. I confessed it. I said, Lord, I thank you that I have, the, I have the tongue of the learned. I always know what to say, that I can speak a word in due season to him that's weary, that when I open up my mouth, it makes things better and, n instead of making things worse. When I open up my mouth and there's a fire, that, that my mouth throws water on the fire, not gasoline on the fire. That's a supernatural woman, like Deborah. Deborah was also a supernatural woman because her very presence, I love this, her very presence brought encouragement and the assurance of victory. Oh, my goodness. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I mean, women, you can operate in such anointing that when you come in the room, everybody knows everything's going to be all right because she's here now. Your husbands can know, oh, I, she got my back. I, I know I'm going to be able to make it because her very presence encourages me. And Deborah was that kind of woman, that her very presence brought encouragement and the assurance of victory. And the reason why I say her very presence is because the, the general of the army, his name was Barak. And apparently God had already spoken to Barak. And Barack is not moving. He needs to bust a move, you know. Y'all know, uh, know sometimes, y'all need to understand, ladies, sometimes the Lord talking to us when we ain't so quick to make a move. And, and you, you say, well, y'all, y'all, well, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? When you gonna do something? What you gonna do? You need, need to understand. And sometimes the man, we try to get ourselves together. <laughs> we just need y'all to lay up off us for a moment. And y'all need to understand that, that men think Men got to think stuff through. And when men talk, we're quiet. That frustrates y'all because when you're thinking, you talk. You talk as you think. You think as you talk. Men go into a cave and we're quiet. And so you say, well, what you going to do? What you going to do? What we going to do? We don't know what we going to do. And no man wants to tell you, I don't know what I'm going to do. So if you just give us a minute, let us think this thing through, then we can give you an answer. And Barack, you know, the Lord tells Barack, you need to go on up there. And so Deborah, Deborah has to put a little, a little pin in his seat. And she said to him, um, didn't the Lord tell you to take 10,000 men and go against Jabin in Sisera? In Judges, the fourth chapter and verse 8 and 9. And Look, Barack said to her, if you go with me, then I'll go. <laughs> now, I wish these words wasn't in the Bible. <laughs> he said, if you go with me, I will go. Years ago when I was a Pentecostal, in the Pentecostal church, we said, we said you know, sometimes I would, the preacher, as we get ready to start, we would start off with a song before we preach. And my song was, Jesus said, if you go, I'll go with you. Open up your mouth, I'll speak for you. Lord, if I go, tell me what to say. They won't believe in me. And that, that was Barack's song. <laughs> Barack said, to Deborah, if you go, I'll go with you. He said, I need you to go with me. And then he says to her, this, this goes from bad to worse, y'all. He said, but if you don't go with me, I ain't going. <laughs> now, let me, let me just, let me just show, so y'all won't be so hard on the brother. Sometime the brother, he just needs to know I got a woman who's going to encourage me. Okay, and no man is just gonna come out and tell you, I really need you to encourage me. I really need you, I need you to go with me. But it's something about having a woman who is a supernatural woman, a woman who we know gonna back him up in prayer, got his back. Come on now, come on, a ride or die woman. I don't care what y'all say. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's not a good thing, but um, um, uh, Sapphira was a ride or die woman. And when the car broke down, she died. That's in Acts, the fifth chapter. They lied to the prophet. They lied to the man of God and said, we sold the property for this much. And, and, and I said, now listen, when Peter, if Peter asked you, this is how much we sold it for. But she didn't know that he had dropped dead. I think she might have got off that, that car, got off that train. 
But when Peter asked her after he dropped dead from lying, is this how much? She said, that's how much we sold it for. And Peter said, man, y'all should all stick together. <laughs> how is y'all have agreed together? Okay? The negative thing is that they lied. The positive thing is that she stood by her man. <laughs> yes, she did. And look at this here. So Barack says, if you go, I'll go with you. Or if you go with me, th th then, then I'll go. But if you don't go with me, I'm not going. And verse 9, and, and she tried to put this in context for him. She said, verse 9, and she said, now I'll go with you. Notwithstanding, the journey that you take is not going to be for your honor. He said, it's this, you need to understand, now we can change this right now. Because this is going to go down in history. It's going to be in the B-I-B-L-E. This is going to go to that, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And watch this. So she said, you need to understand, this is going to be recorded that you wouldn't go unless a woman go with you. Barak said, I don't care. <laughs> but watch this. What I want you to see here is that Deborah was a supernatural woman because she was an encourager. Okay. Now, here's the good part of this. If you go on to read the story, Barak, Deborah didn't have to fight. Barak did the fighting. Are you, are you following me here? So y'all back up off the brothers. Don't be calling Barak no punk. He, he fought the battle. He just wanted to know that this woman, this woman of God, this supernatural woman was in his corner and would be praying for him when he went to fight. Oh, come on now. A good man is willing to fight, but we want to know that while we out there fighting these devils and these demons and these economic demons, that we got a woman who's willing to pray for us while we're fighting. Look at this. So, she was an encourager. So, after they left, he still delayed. Women have an innate ability to be the hero for those around them. Your husband, your children, family, co-workers, and others may see your strength, but there may be times you feel fatigued. Dr. Herbert and Marcia Bailey and their ministry guests encourage you to awaken the supernatural woman God has called you to be. Order these powerful resources today for your love gift of $15 or more. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. Ask for The Supernatural Woman. Ready to tee off? Golfers can tee off at the Compass CDC's annual golf tournament on August 14th. Registration begins at 8 a.m. at Cobblestone Park Golf Club, 280 University Club Parkway in Blythewood. I said, I must enlarge my place of gathering. So walls are coming down. He says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. He says, come unto me that are heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. Glory to God. Experience the power of God like never before. It's an encounter that you can't afford to miss. Join SWATA August 27th and 28th with host Dr. Marsha Bailey and special guest Pastor Mary Seawright. Get ready for the encounter at Right Direction Church International. 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia, August 27th and 28th, 7 p.m. nightly. For more information, call 877-798-LIFE, 5433, or log on to rightdirection.info. Join Dr. Herbert Bailey when he speaks in your area. Make plans to be with him at Dominion World Ministries for their pastor's appreciation service on Sunday, August 9th at 6 p.m. The church is located at 710 South Pleasantburg Drive, Greenville, South Carolina. Before I go off the air, I want to pray for all of you, especially for women that may be watching us today. Ladies, you have so much to face as wives, as mothers, 
as sometimes trying to juggle being a career woman along with a wife and a mother and all everything else you have to do, the grace of God is sufficient for you. Let's pray. Father, I pray today for everyone under the sound of my voice and those viewing this broadcast. I speak your blessings upon them. I speak your perfect will upon them. I pray especially today for women, women who are struggling, women who have a lot of burdens on them. We cast all them over on you because you love us and you care for us. I thank you, Lord God, that you strengthen them to be everything that they need to be. I call them supernatural women today. And I thank you, Father, that they have the grace, they have the anointing to complete their assignments in lives, in their lives and do everything that you ordained for them to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks again for watching today. Please prayerfully consider becoming a Right Direction partner who prays for us, who sends in a monthly gift as God speaks to you and as God blesses you. In exchange, we communicate with you. We pray for you. You can also contact us by a telephone so we can pray with you. And we thank God as a result of this partnership that we can accomplish more together than we can alone. The Bible says two are better than one because we have a great reward for our labor. Until next week, keep listening for that still small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Next week on Direction for Life. I don't know anybody in my family ever got this, anybody else had this, but I believe God and great faith, listen, great faith takes God outside the box. Great faith says that God can do exceedingly, abundantly above anything I could ask or think. Supernatural faith. If you are in our area, come join us at one of our three locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday morning worship is at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Wednesday Bible study is at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Friday women's Bible study is at 12 noon. Our worship center is located at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Trey and Katie Brave for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 990 Willington Drive in Orangeburg. In Florence, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Dwayne and Denise White for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 1507 King Avenue in Florence. Please email your testimonies to praise report at rightdirection.info or letters can be mailed to P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Please consider partnering with us or send a one-time financial gift. For more information, visit our website at rightdirection.info or call us toll free at 877-798-5433. Right Direction Ministries, empowering people and changing generations.